I've been playing music now for, honestly, probably about 10 years off and on. I started writing original songs probably at about 14 or 15 years old when I picked up the acoustic for the first time. Yeah, we are working on a song called Home I Am. It could be the last track on the album, so this is kind of a big deal. We're starting it early, but uh, kind of a ukulele track. Think big, think composition. It's going to be a tough monster to tackle. I've known George for 23 years. Uh, I've known him since he was a wee little babe. I remember he got an iMac uh, when he was probably in 10th grade and he just started doing recording projects left and right and they were terrible and he would send me uh, the audio and say what do you think of this and I would always dog him <laughs> and uh, now he sends me stuff and I, I always say you wrote that? <laughs> I've had these songs kind of on the back burner you know I'm trying to churn out school I got so many things going on and uh, I would just play little gigs here and there and Matt Baker he approached me after I did an event called Listening Room at the University of Mobile and he said, man, I can make your songs rock. And we actually pursued it. We began the process in February 2012. This is my briefcase. This is where the magic happens. This is where business gets done. Right here. This guy had it. This guy had, he had the composure. He had the talent. He had the stage presence. He had the potential to have the music. He had a sound that was very his own, which is hard to find these days. He's original, and I know that's so cliche, but he has a, a witty sense of lyrics. They're clever. I didn't even know he wanted to record. I don't think he even knew he wanted to record. It was just kind of like this divine moment where it was like, I should record it, and I should produce it. You know, it was like we kind of just met at the right time. He's a racist. You heard it here first, folks. Racially profiling my clients. I love it. Matt is, he's such a laid back, fun guy. He's just, he's really passionate about what he does and I think that's what drew me to Matt to begin with. Yeah, every artist has his quirks, but uh, George, he was here early, ready to go, coffee in hand and ready to rock. And uh, so my experience with him was unique in the sense that he was very, he was equally as professionally driven as well as artistically driven. first song we did was Found My Way, and that, I think, ended up being me and Matt's favorite song, and it's really interesting because nobody really played that much on it. It was just an acoustic guitar, there's no bass, a little bit of banjo, and we had some kind of tribal drums in there. We were just like, what, what could we not do? Okay, let's not use drums. So we grabbed a rack tom and a floor tom and created it like timpani and just kind of played it like cavemen would play it. And it created this incredible, you know, incredible, you know, moment that I think is extremely modern, extremely fresh. I'm scared that it's going to be too much of a good thing. I'm, I'm feeling the best thing. After that course, that's where I'm feeling a transition into okay. the next song. When a situation would arise where we didn't really see eye to eye, we were pretty vocal about it and honest about it, but in a respectful way because I, I think one of the greatest things about our relationship in the studio was that we respected each other's opinions. Me and, me and George got along really well. He's extremely detailed in what he wants, almost to the point of being OCD about his music. So the biggest challenge working with George was keeping him motivated and keeping him productive, but not getting bogged down too much on tiny details that 99% of the people wouldn't notice or hear. Sometimes he's too witty for his own good. Uh, so witty uh, that uh, he'll force a, a rhyme scheme or he'll force a lyric because it, it works, but uh, maybe it takes away from the meaning that he intends. Some of these songs are a little bit older, um, so we had to kind of breathe new life into them, and some of them are obviously a little bit newer. A lot of times it would be me saying, hey Matt, let's try this out, and he would say, all right, let's do it, and sometimes it would work out, and sometimes we'd look back and we would say, mm, mm It's exploration, but it's also, you know, music. So it's this kind of this balance between how can we manipulate the sounds to not be what you would think they'd be, but yet still present that in a way that the common audience would accept it and, and find it good. Cool. Play it one more time for me. Uh, okay. I like 
I like the intro. What do you like? What do you hate? I like the guitars. Fleshing out songs and putting yourself out there and you know the album title is The Great Coward and I think by naming it something like that and by being so vulnerable it actually helps you escape that and stop being that coward. Let's trade seats for a second. We'll do it right. last week. I'm going to hit the drums and then I must make sure the level our levels right. are about negative 10. All right. My personality and, and personal vision as a producer is that I'm, I'm providing a service. I'm being paid to help the artist make the best record they can make. But one of the reasons I would say, you know, having a producer, you know, work on your stuff and, and recommend that is that it really helps having somebody that's objective, somebody that has an outside ear that, that doesn't have to travel with the band, that doesn't have to share a hotel room, doesn't have to, you know, play the politics that a band has to play. They can say, this is not good or this is great, but this would make it even better. It's definitely one of the biggest challenges I've ever faced as a musician going into a studio with a producer and getting work done while having fun and realizing that the process is the process. It's been tough being an independent musician and having to do everything yourself. You just want to focus on the music, you know, it's. I guess almost selfish in a way of, I, I just want to make music, I don't want to have to deal with all this other stuff. Because I think the financial factor was probably honestly one of the biggest reasons why I didn't make an album two years ago. There's a few things about Kickstarter that really appealed to me from the get-go. Obviously there's the main thing of raising funds through crowdsourcing. You want to get people invested in you and into your music in a natural way to where they just want to come along for the ride. I was drawn to Kickstarter probably just because of the layout. I really like the simplicity of it. Uh, I was able to post pictures, post a video, um, write text, really simple. Uh, it's just simple and efficient. The whole campaign was an amazing process and also very stressful just because um, it's totally depending on people and on fans. And uh, we, we asked for $8,000 and had like 6,000 the day before it was due. So we were freaking out. And we literally made two grand the day of. Do I think I'll raise $2,500? You know, the little, the little pessimist, cynical man inside of me says no. He says, you're gonna fail. But I believe in myself. I believe in this product. I believe in my music. I believe in what it stands for. And I believe it's quality. I believe in humanity in the sense that I have great friends, I have great family, and I think there's great people out there who love great music. And I'm confident that that combination is going to be a success. I think he'll definitely do it. I think he has a reasonable goal, and I think uh, with his target audience in mind, I think that he can meet that goal. Yeah, absolutely. I'm feeling pretty good about it, man. I didn't know it would turn into a radio single, but, you know, what producer says goes, man. If he can make it into a hit, I'm down. Simon and Garfunkel wouldn't complain, and neither will I. My goal in working with George was to basically make his music open to a bigger audience so that he could reach another level of popularity. You know, he came to me when we first started recording and said that he was considering, you know, a career, but he didn't know where to start. You know, he didn't really know. He was finishing up a university degree, and he didn't really know what next for himself. And I was like, dude, you can do this. You have the talent and the ability to do this. You got to commit to it. To expand my reach, put it out there for licensing, for TV, film, commercials, you name it. Um, some people say it's selling out. I call it survival. If you got a commercial, I don't care what it is, as long as you're not like worshiping Satan and want me as background music, I'm willing to put my music out there for that purpose, which is why I also got instrumental versions done of the entire record. I'm hoping that, that if I'm just a nice enough guy, trying hard and making good content, that somebody's eventually gonna notice. And I'm gonna meet the right person, the right door might open up, and uh, at that point, I could further my career as a musician and maybe make a living out of it.